So uh, I've got uh, Margot here. Uh, we were just going to have a nice little co uh, conversation together, but of course I woke up uh, this morning, I was intending to sort of go into a semi-retirement and I realised I can't do that. Uh, this sort of woke me back up again. So uh, shall we just go through some of these slides, Margot, and just see, because yeah. you're, you, you're more up to, uh, up to date with it all than I am. Yeah, I just did a video on the high carbon dioxide reading. I did it for, did it for my Subscribestar members last night. And we just experienced the highest carbon dioxide level in recorded human history, um, at least for 800,000 years. And um, it was this, so explain this. So today is Tuesday, May the 5th, 2020. And it's May the 6th for you. But um, so this is... You've got the slide here, so you want to explain that? Yeah, so anyway, and an interesting thing was uh, I found a, a website, I can't remember what it was, which gives the CO2 levels, and I found um, I found this, and it did a comparison with last the same day last year, so it was 418 parts per million, and then the same date last year, it was 414 parts per million. Yeah, yeah. And what was interesting was when I, I, I didn't do a screenshot of that. Normally I always do a screenshot. I didn't do a screenshot. Mm -hmm. And when I go back, uh, it won't load. Oh. So there's no data. So I've got there's a, no data. I got a screenshot of it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I got anyway. one. Yeah. So I'll go on to the next slide. Okay. Um, so I just came across this, uh, this thread. This is from David. Uh, Wallace Wells, and he's talking about uh, conditions in Russia, most specifically uh, Siberia. And of course, you know, we haven't been hearing much of that in the media. Right. But there just seems to be quite a lot that's come out in the last few so, days. So he, he said, conditions throughout April and into May have been freakishly warm. In recent days, temperatures have spiked as much as 36 degrees Fahrenheit, that's 20 degrees Celsius, above normal for this time of year. Uh, and the heat is expected to hold for at least the next week. Yeah, so, and we're not hearing much about this at all. This is the first no, just, I've heard about it when you showed all yeah, this to so me today. Just one, one tweet from one person, you know? Mm-hmm. Well, I'd show, I've been showing Climate Reanalyzer, the two-meter temperature anomaly map. So it could be they did have in the last couple of weeks, you know, a big red area moving down through Russia, and then it moved down into Mongolia and China, and now now it's into the brown. But but that's still, yeah. the, like, the brown is still, like, 10 degrees higher than normal. Yeah. But and ahead. also, we know that mm -hmm. um, NASA worldview, at least, you know, um, you know, uh, alters the data when, when when they feel that they need to. So, right. you right. know, we can't always take it as gospel. That's right. Yeah. So, anyway, go ahead towns have been, Yeah, towns have been caught up in the fires with hundreds of structures wiped out and smoke clogging the air, making it hard to breathe. Critical situation might be an understatement. Yeah, and it's so early in the season for this to be happening. It's awful. Yeah, I mean, May, late April, you know. I know, and, it's only and May there have been 5th. several articles that have come out, which I'll, mm -hmm. uh, I'll provide in the description yeah. uh, box below. Uh, this, this one, um, this comes from Science Alert. We don't want to alarm anyone, but a large amount of Siberia is on fire. Um, and here goes another article. This is uh, from Gizmodo. Uh, Russia set a record for its hottest winter ever. And Moscow basically skipped the season entirely. Now the Siberian countryside is on fire with roughly 5 million acres of forest and grassland ablaze. The largest fires around uh, 1 million acres alone. That's awful. I mean, it's, it's just, and we hear nothing, 
you know, yeah. these these are these are specialist publications. Right. Uh, here goes another article. Uh, wait a minute. Is that the same? It might be referring no, to the same article. this is a different one. It's a different oh, one. This is a different one. Mm-hmm. So we should probably talk about the huge wildfires in Siberia right now. And I've connected on Facebook with, uh, sorry, on uh, Twitter with this guy mm-hmm. just this morning. With Brian Khan, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then there was this from the same guy. Moscow didn't get a winter this year. Mm-hmm. So uh, I'll just read this little bit. Shall I? Uh, mm-hmm. Moscow just had its first winter in recorded history with an average temperature about above freezing, running at a blistering 6.3 uh, degrees Celsius above average. The heat wasn't isolated either, with other parts of Eurasia all experiencing freakish warmth and low snowpack. Well, I had a winter in Moscow uh, in the 1970s, and I would say that the average temperature, you know, uh, a really warm day was minus ten, and it went down to minus twenty. So wow. you know that's that's a that's, mm. that's a pretty that Celsius? good comparison. Minus, Celsius, yes. Yeah, yeah. So well, we, you know, minus we, ten compared with six point three positive, you know. Yeah. So we had a really warm winter here in Reno, and we had our cold weather and snow in November and December, and then. Then it warmed up, and my heating bill was a lot lower, and we didn't. I didn't have to shovel snow at all this year. I mean, I had snow on my car a couple of times, just a little bit, a couple of inches, and that was it. And it's just, and now it it went from that warm winter to now it's summer. It's in the 80s mm. today, and we had no wow. Snow. Yeah. And I, I, I saw some temperature charts showing that, I mean, just really high temperatures in California mm-hmm. and Nevada, yeah. and the whole of the West. And we had, we had, like I said, the bulk of our snow in November and December. And so we're running a lower snowpack this year. And we yeah. get the water from the Sierras, the snow that's in the Sierra Nevadas, that's how we get our water here so well that's exactly the same with the uh, south island of the of new mm-hmm. zealand we've got the southern alps and mm-hmm. i mean the snowpack is decreasing all the time mm-hmm. and uh at some stage those those rivers are just going to dry up you know they're, know. they're, they're all yeah. Uh, snow, snow yeah uh, i'm going to come from the snow so anyway i'll go on i won't read yeah. this Okay. Well, perhaps just this paragraph. The temperature yeah, anomaly okay. this winter effectively doubles the old one, making this no doubter for the record books that stretch back 140 years, according to TASS. Both January and February were the warmest ever recorded. Snow is, ha, has also been missing in action, is it? I don't know. Forcing yeah, the MIA, Russian capital yeah. to, to truck in a few piles for the New Year's Eve celebrations. And we hear nothing about this. Nothing right. at all. right. Uh, so um, these are. Uh, this is the article which came out uh, a couple of days ago, which I only picked up today. And this just makes the hair stand up on end. You know, wildfires mm-hmm. critical in Siberia and Russian Far East, up to ten times worse than last year. Uh, people are flouting coronavirus lockdown to start fires. Well. My suspicion is whatever they say about arson and uh, and about farming practices, uh, that this is all peat forest. And my suspicion is, I mean, Russia is so huge, there's no way that they put out the fires from last year. No. Um, no. Uh, so they're just starting up again. And those fires are really hard to put out because of the peat and the, yeah. uh, the, the tar and... There's a lot of methane, and you know, there's the permafrost. You should see melting. the pictures. It's awful. You should see the pictures of the of the people here. Yeah. Uh, you know, who are fighting the fire. They're just in yeah. khaki clothes. They've got no yeah. protection or anything. Yeah. Pan pointed that one out to me. Yeah. So, uh, anyway, so there's that, and I just wanted to take this back to. Last year, in fact, this was at the end mm-hmm. of July, so mm-hmm. you know we're right. <laughs> we're in early May. Right. Uh, 
fire and flood apocalypse with fire, wildfires raging and dire threat to Baikal, uh, the world's deepest lake, around yeah. 3 million hectares on fire, including the Arctic, with fumes having hit areas larger than the European Union. So now I rem- it's 10 I times I remember now. that. I remember seeing all the smoke on NASA Worldview there. It was, yeah. it went on for months. And it's over an area that we can hardly, we can scarcely imagine. I know. And no one's talking about this. Yes. And I think what they're talking about, these present fires, they're down near by, by Carl, which is what they're talking about here. But I mean, there were fires all mm-hmm. over Siberia. Yeah. But that was catastrophic because it's yeah. just one of the most magical areas of the, yeah. of the planet, you know. It looks, like, it looks like it was what it was beautiful, you know. So. Yeah, yeah. I think I, I mean, my only regret is I, I've got through life without seeing it. <laughs> yeah. Well, you can't see every forest, but. No, that's right. I love the trees. So I just wanted to uh, uh, show this one. Uh, because this, these pictures say a lot. Um, this is the Barents Sea, and you've been monitoring this far better than I have. But I, even when I've been in, I've just seen how either there's no ice or practically no ice. Yeah, and, and just the, and these pictures seem to confirm it. Yeah, and just to refresh people's memory on where the Barents Sea is, that's the sea that's to the west of Novaya Zemlya, and we didn't get any ice there this this winter and last winter, yeah. but especially this winter. And so, so um, it's really between. Am I right? It's between Svalbard and Norway, is in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, and it's coming up from Norway. You come up from north from Norway, and then it's that area there. That's the Barents Sea when you're coming in from the Atlantic into the Arctic and then it's over then Novi Zemlya is on the right and Barents Sea is right in there. <clears throat> yeah, so those are basically the things that I picked up this morning and I yeah. just I mean, you know, the, the Siberian thing. I, I kind of knew about Moscow. Um, I haven't seen anything for a while. I knew that they were having a, a really warm winter but when I see this well it just brings it back and and really russia and siberia are kind of the ground zero for all of this aren't they it seems like it and we're set yeah. up for, to have the hardest hottest year on record and hottest summer on record so so what is just very briefly is your assessment of what has happened to um you know world greenhouse gases um you know, with this economic uh, lockdown. Uh, I mean, one thing that occurs to me is, you know, I mean, you know, we've had, you know, a major lockdown and, and uh, you know, we're getting these these record levels of carbon dioxide. So what's help happening elsewhere? Well, we still have people on the planet and we're still living and we're still producing things and we're still using electricity and we're still driving cars and um it's it's not like everything completely stopped the planes are still flying there are fewer of them in the sky and what i saw for a couple of months was massive um, areas of sulfur dioxide over the northern hemisphere and i was reporting on that and i didn't understand where all where it all was coming from because it didn't look like it was coming from the earthquakes or the fracture zones or tectonic plates you know the plate lines and so then I thought well maybe it's the sulfates falling out of the sky and as they're falling down it's they're being picked up as sulfur dioxide And, you know, the instruments don't know if it's falling down or going up in the atmosphere. So, and now when I look at sulfur dioxide, all those big red clouds are gone. And so for about the last couple of weeks, the sulfur dioxide has has dissipated and it's back down to more normal levels and seeing 
more greens and blues and you know some cream colored and and we're still now we can actually see um, a sulfur dioxide release you know before the earthquakes and things like that whereas before I couldn't tell what was what was coming up from the ground and what was what was in the air so there was that meme wasn't there that there was a lot of uh, there was a huge sort of reduction um, in particular uh, while the um, you know, while the crematoria were burning in Wuhan China um, well I, I mean you can see there's still a lot of sulfur dioxide coming up in China because they're yeah. the biggest polluters in the world and you know they they have people and you know they yeah. didn't they're using electricity and they're eating and they're you know yeah. they're polluting you know just because they're not going to work doesn't mean that all of that stopped and so i think that's kind of a kind of a misconception and we don't know because we've never been in this position before yeah you know so we that's don't know that, what to that's expect that's it isn't it Mm -hmm. And there's no way to measure it, you know. There's no way to really measure what's happening, and 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 you know when the economy starts back up, you know how many more cars are going to be on the street. I don't know. I just know that the cars never stopped here in Reno. I mean, people were yeah. driving around all the time, and the construction never stopped. They've been replacing all the roads. And putting in fiber optic cable and and five G probably. Oh yeah, they've been well. We've had five G for the last couple of years. We were first yeah. one of the first cities to have it. Oh really? Mm hmm. And I I knew I could I t I could tell a difference immediately. It's I knew it started in the summer of 2018, and I felt it. And we were one of the test test cities for it to go in for the wireless for all the wireless companies and so we were one of the first ones to get it and I started seeing the towers go up and I'm like what are those and I didn't know what they were and then once the pictures came out I knew that they were 5G and there's a 5G tower at my storage unit and so every time I go to my storage unit I get you know get exposed so yeah. what are you going to do? There's nothing you can do. But basically, I, you know, as I was sort of thinking this morning, we're we we're, we're 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 on our own. I mean, what can we believe? We can just monitor things as best we can, and um, you know, and, and 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 join the dots as best we can. You know, who and and try to keep in this crazy world? Can we rely on you? Know? And we have, we do have an inner sense of knowing the truth. We do have yeah, that yeah. as humans with souls. We That's are connected right. to the God mind. We are connected to God. We are connected to the source and of, you know, source of the universe, God, whatever you want to call it. And with that, and we, we can know the truth and we can become quiet and ask for God to show us and to give us discernment oh. and to, you know, help us to see the yeah. truth and to see between the lines and to see the lies. And sometimes for me, you know, it's not about the words that I read. It's not about the, the person and their degrees or anything. It's about a feeling I get. It, you know, I can, a lot of times I'll be reading an article and it's like, oh, that doesn't feel right. Or I'll be hearing someone talk and I'm like, that that doesn't feel right to me. It doesn't. And then I just kind of put that on the back burner. And then a few days later, that person ends up being exposed. And I'm like, well, well, that's what I thought. But, you know, I can't, I can't come out and say, you know, this this person's not telling the truth because I don't think so, you know, yeah, but, yeah, yeah, we, yeah, yeah, but yeah. we, we have that inner knowing and that inner instinct and, you know, the gut feeling and, and if we can, you know, not be so pulled with, with our minds and with our heads and tune into that gut feeling and that knowingness, yeah. you know, I think it, it helps us to, 
get a get that get that understanding and to know other, that we don't have to believe everything we read or see yeah, we don't exactly. have to believe it and you know we all we have to really focus on one thing that's helped for me is i've really started focusing more on me and what's going on with me in my immediate environment and what can i do to make it through this day you know yeah. all i, I have to do is make it through this day and then yeah tomorrow's exactly. the one, next day. one day one hour at a time you know right and if it means but, i i stay in prayer then i stay in prayer or if it means or, uh, i'm going to grow a garden then i work on growing a garden but every day i i try and stay to a schedule and i try and stay on task with whatever i'm doing and that seems to be helping a lot yeah and uh the other thing that occurs to me is that if you're a materialist and you think this is the only life you have uh you might think it's precious you might not but uh that the concomitant of that is, is fear, you know, because right. you don't know what comes afterwards. Whereas if you've got an inner knowing, you know what comes afterwards. Yeah, if you've got a spiritual uh, there's, connection. You know, there's, no, uh, there's no reason for fear. No, and I'm ready to go. You know, I am so ready to go, and it, it'll happen when it's time. But I'm yeah. not trying to hold on. I'm just, I'm just trying to maintain until it's time to go. Yeah. And trying to be as prepared as possible for any situation. But I know there are going to be certain situations that I won't be able to deal with. Yes. Like, I, I couldn't live with no electricity for days and days and days on end. Yeah. And no, I couldn't do that. I'm not. Or water, or water coming out of the tap, mm -hmm. you know. I'm not equipped to do that. And very no. few of us know, would know yeah. how to do that. Yes. You know, I don't live out on a homestead and, you know, off the grid and, you know, totally self-sufficient. And even then, you know, yes. what if you got sick or what if you cut your foot and got an infection? You know, could you could you heal it, heal yourself? And, you know, it's it's I just think we'll be here until it's our time to go. And then yeah. when it's our time to go, we'll go. And then people talk about being self-sufficient, but I mean, the fact is that that sort of takes us back a century or so. And what happens if we do get mm -hmm. an infection? Well, we die, you know. We die, and that was, yeah. And, and, that, and that's what happens. So, you know, right. that's something that the, you know, that the preppers don't really talk about. And the preppers have prepped. They bought things, you know, and when yeah. the supply chain breaks down, which it's doing, how are they going to buy stuff to prep with, you know? Because what yeah. if you go through all your preps and and the methane bomb hasn't gone off and we're still here? What do you do, you know? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know? Anyway, I think we've probably covered the basics there. Yeah, so I've uh, enjoyed our chat so, here. Yeah, so we'll leave it uh, at that. Okay. So if you want to turn off the recorder. <laughs> okay.